The Life of Toru Honda, Fruits Basket Toru Honda is the main protagonist of the Fruits Basket series. She's the only daughter to the late Kyoko and Katsuya Honda. Toru is a student at Kaibara Municipal High School. She loves to cook, describes herself as an excellent housekeeper, and has an after-school job as an office janitor to pay her tuition fees to avoid being a burden to her relatives. She's depicted as a polite, optimistic, independent, extremely kind, and selfless person with a nurturing personality. Following her mother's death, which left her orphaned, Toru begins living with Shigure, Yuki, and Kyo Soma due to accidentally setting up a tent on their property and later being hired as their landlady. She later learns that 13 members of the Soma family are cursed as they turn into animals of the Chinese zodiac if they're embraced by anyone of the opposite sex or when their bodies come under a great deal of stress. As the series progresses, Toru meets and befriends the rest of the zodiac and the family's mysterious head, Akito Soma, and resolves to break the curse that burdens them. Only later does she admit that she wants to free Kyo most of all. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Toru Honda and potentially crying. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels like the Imagi 2 and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Early Life Toru was born as an only child to Kyoko and Katsuya Honda. They lived a very happy and lovely life and would go out as a family all the time. Occasionally, they would visit Toru's grandfather, who was the only one who didn't oppose Kyoko and Katsuya's marriage. However, when Toru was three years old, Katsuya died of pneumonia while he was away on a business trip. During his funeral, Katsuya's relatives accused Toru of being the child of an affair because they thought she doesn't resemble him. And because of Kyoko's controversial past as a delinquent, she was berated and blamed for Katsuya's death. Toru, who overheard all of this, thus had a harder time to remember her father fondly. Soon after, Kyoko fell into a deep depression, to such an extent that she neglected Toru. She didn't check up on her, didn't care for her, and didn't talk to her. Kyoko was convinced that Katsuya was waiting for her in the sea, so she went there with the thought of committing suicide in order to be reunited with her beloved. After Kyoko abandoned her, Toru's grandfather was the only one who checked up on Toru. Toru, heartbroken by her mother's neglect and abandonment, convinced herself that the only way to make Kyoko come back and stay with her was to become like her father. So while Kyoko was gone, Toru tried to remember as much as she could of Katsuya, including his tendency to speak politely. Following this event, Kyoko lived with the thought of raising Toru well and never abandoning her again. They were extremely close and spent much time together, and Kyoko shaped much of Toru's character by the wisdom she shared with her. Toru was very fond of bedtime stories her mother used to tell her, especially the ones of the Chinese Zodiac. Aside from her life at home with her mother, Toru was often a victim of bullying at school. The children would play a game called Fruits Basket, and her peers would humiliate her during the game by designating her as a rice ball instead of a fruit, and never calling on her during the game. Because of this, Toru began thinking that she didn't belong amongst the crowd, regularly feeling lonely. However, Toru still stayed positive, hoping that someone would call out rice ball so she could play as well. Meeting Yuki Soma at one point when Toru was in elementary school, she ran away from some of her male classmate bullies who were chasing her, but ended up being completely lost in the process. When she almost succumbed to her fear, she was found by a boy in a hat. Toru then began running after him in hopes of being saved and returning back home, and Yuki would stop around every corner and wait for Toru to catch up. When he eventually succeeded in guiding Toru back to her home, Yuki gave her his hat and immediately disappeared from the scene since he had transformed into his rat form. Meanwhile, Toru and Kyoko hugged one another out of relief. Although she didn't know the identity of the boy who helped her, Toru cherished the memory and has kept the hat as a memento ever since. Meeting Arisa and Saki during middle school years, Toru took care of most of the household chores while Kyoko worked. Kyoko also expressed her wish for Toru to graduate middle school and attend high school and experience life as a high school girl, something Kyoko herself was never able to do. Despite her friendly personality, Toru mostly spent her time alone at school. When she met Arisa Uwatani in her first year of middle school, Arisa was still in the violent street gang. Upon finding out about Arisa's idolization towards the Crimson Butterfly, as in Kyoko, Toru invited her over to her house. However, Arisa was disillusioned that Kyoko had become a doting parent and rejected both Toru and Kyoko because the love between them reminded her of the neglect from her single father. Despite Arisa's harsh personality, Toru continued to reach out her hand and even saved her from getting beaten by her fellow gang members and took her back to her house. 
Gradually embracing the loving environment that she never had, Arisa would spend more time with Toru and Kyoko, and Toru deeply treasured her friendship with Arisa despite her peers' misgivings. After Arisa quit her gang with Kyoko's help, she emotionally declared wanting to become Toru's best friend. From that point on, Arisa and Toru became inseparable and were often pointed out for being an odd duo. As Toru reached 8th grade, Saki Hanajima transferred into her class. While most of the class ignored Saki, Toru cheerfully reached out to her and gave her some extra food during lunch. Toru and Arisa later invited Saki to sit with them, and despite Saki's doubts since she often stood out, the two girls explained that they were also social outcasts in their own way. The three of them began spending much time together, and Saki was given the nickname Hanachan by the two girls. Even after finding out about Saki having the power of electrical waves, Toru confessed to Saki that she still loved her and wanted to continue being friends with her. She also consoled Saki to not distance herself, while Arisa told her not to assume things. Saki emotionally became firm friends with Toru and Arisa as a result. The three girls found strength in each other and became inseparable best friends. Death of Kyoko Toru enrolled at Kaibara Municipal High School along with Saki and Arisa. After the first day of high school, the three of them threw a party at Toru's house while Kyoko was there to celebrate with them. Tragedy struck one day as Kyoko was hit and killed in a car accident. When Toru rushed to see her in the hospital, she had already passed away, which left Toru completely grief-stricken. After becoming orphaned, it was eventually decided that Toru's paternal grandfather would take her in. He solely lived on his pension, so Toru decided to work so she could pay her own taxes and expenses to lessen the burden for him. When Toru was moving out from the house she shared with Kyoko, she felt as if her presence was fading away, and she was overcome with fear that all of their moments together and promises to each other would disappear. Because of this, Toru swore to always put her mother first in her heart. And it was also during this time that Toru's grandfather habitually began calling Toru for Kyoko. Everyone seemed to write this off as a result of his age, but he later admits that he started doing it because after Kyoko's funeral, it looked like Toru was going to fall apart if there wasn't some sort of reminder every so often that Kyoko was once alive and that other people think of her as well. Pre-Fruits Basket Four months before the start of the series, Toru's grandfather revealed that his daughter's family would be moving into their house, but that the house needed remodeling first. He explained that he would temporarily live with his daughter's family during the construction, but due to their house being too small to fit two new guests, he asked Toru if she had a place to stay in in the meanwhile. Not wanting her grandfather to worry, Toru replied that she did. However, in fact, Toru did not want to bother anyone or have the heart to ask Arisa or Saki if she could stay with one of them, so she ultimately decided to secretly move into a tent in the woods. First Year Arc Toru is first seen outside of her tent telling her mother's picture that she will be back after school. Having a little extra time left before school, Toru takes a stroll around when she notices a house nearby where she begins admiring the Chinese zodiac figures. Shigure Soma, the owner of the house, introduces himself while Toru does the same, and they talk about the zodiac before her classmate Yuki Soma interrupts. Yuki and Toru walk together to school, with Toru learning that Yuki has a hatred for the cat in the zodiac. Later that night, Yuki and Shigure find her tent and question why she's there. Toru explains her situation and offers to pay rent to them, begging them to allow her to stay in her tent there. A landslide destroyed her tent, however, and Shigure invited her to stay the night at the house. This eventually leads him to offer a room and board to Toru in exchange for her doing household chores, which she accepts. The same morning, Kyosoma appears and begins to pick a fight against Yuki. Toru tries to stop him and she accidentally hugs him, which causes him to turn into a cat. She also bumps into Yuki and Shigure, causing them to turn into a rat and a dog respectively. This is how Toru learns of the Soma family curse, where 13 members of the house are possessed by the spirits of the Chinese zodiac and are transformed into their animal if hugged by someone of the opposite sex. Despite being an outsider, Toru is given permission by the head of the Soma family, Akito Soma, to stay at Shigure's house. Toru quickly becomes close friends with Yuki, and her acceptance of him despite the curse inspires Yuki to better himself. And despite Kyo's initial rude behaviors towards her, Toru becomes good friends with him as well, and confesses that she always liked the cat in the Zodiac legend the most. Time passes and she meets another member of the Zodiac, the boar Kagura-soma. Eventually, Toru receives word from her grandfather that the renovations on his home are done. Toru had grown so attached to the Soma family that she finds it extremely difficult to leave them. In spite of this, Toru believes she's intruding on the Somas and decides to return to her grandfather's house, where she's treated poorly by her relatives. However, Yuki and Kyo arrive to take her back with her grandfather's blessing. Kyo encourages Toru to speak up and be selfish sometimes, and Toru confesses that she would rather stay with the Somas. 
The three then walk home together and Toru joyfully moves back in with the Somas. During the school's cultural festival, Toru meets two more members of the Soma family, Momiji and Hattori, the rabbit and the dragon respectively. Toru also inadvertently reveals to Arisa and Saki that she's living with Yuki and Kyo. They invite themselves to the Soma's house and later give the Somas their blessing to look after Toru. Later, Hattori asks Toru to visit the main house, though Toru is worried that Hattori is going to erase her memories. During her meeting with Hattori, Toru learns about Hattori's past and he warns her about the Somas saying that they were dangerous, but Toru remains steadfast in her affection for the family. The encounter that was meant to frighten her away instead gave her the first hints that there was something sinister beneath the surface and that the Soma family was carrying a heavy weight. After seeing Akito for the first time, she realizes that Akito is a presence that frightens the Somas. She questions Shigure and the curse, but he doesn't find the need to tell her anything. Toru meets yet another member of the Zodiac soon after, the ox, Hatsuharu Soma, during a school track day. She learns of Yuki's abuse at the hands of Akito and is embarrassed when Hatsuharu insinuates that Yuki is much happier because of her. Toru continues to develop a strong bond with the Somas during the holidays like Valentine's Day where she made chocolates for all of her friends and White Day where Momiji treated her, Yuki, and Kyo to a day at the hot springs. It's during this trip that Toru realizes that Momiji is only a year younger than her. Second Year Arc On the first day of the next school year, Hatsuharu and Momiji begin to attend the same school as Toru, Yuki, and Kyo. Akito introduces herself, at this point still identifying as male, that same day and Toru feels intimidated by her, but still manages to defend Yuki from Akito even though Toru herself didn't understand why he was so afraid of Akito. She's then determined to cheer Yuki up and thus invites him and all of her other friends to play badminton. Toru continues to come into contact with other members of the Zodiac, meeting the snake, Ayame, who is also Yuki's older brother. Toru wishes for Yuki and Ayame to become closer. She also meets Momiji's mother, who had no memories of her son as she broke down upon finding out he was cursed and had to have her memories wiped. This experience and the subsequent embrace further endears Momiji to Toru. She also takes Kyo, Yuki, Arisa, and Saki to visit her mother's grave on the anniversary of her death. While happy to spend happy times with her friends, Toru is surprised by how Kyo looks so detached. During the evening the same day, Toru falls asleep in the living room to which Kyo whispers that he's sorry. After taking a small vacation with the Somas, Toru meets Kisa Soma, the tiger, in which they develop a strong affection for each other. Toru also meets the monkey, Ritsu Soma. More lighthearted events occur with Toru catching a cold and Kyo taking care of her by cooking a rice porridge for her, and Toru joining Yuki at Ayame's costume store. During the same time period, Toru also meets Hirosoma, the Ram of the Zodiac, who immediately starts displaying disdain, jealousy, and anger towards Toru, especially since she was able to help Kisa and he wasn't. When Kyo's adoptive father Kazuma Soma comes to visit, Toru and he develop a positive bond, especially since she's a positive influence on Kyo. But because of his belief in that Toru will be able to save Kyo, he forces Kyo to reveal the monstrous true form of his curse. Kyo violently tries to push Toru away, but Toru, although scared and repulsed, stays with him because she wants to understand him, listen to his worries, and live life alongside him, just like he has done for and with her. Kyo, who had never received such an acceptance from anyone before, hugs her and calls her by name for the first time. Toru then carries Kyo home in his cat form while he vows to always treasure Toru. During Summer Vacation Toru and the Somas head to the Soma Beach House to have fun during summer vacation. At one point, Hiro calls Toru out for having attachment issues with her mother and questions whether she has anything else in her life except her mother. Because of his remarks, Toru is forced to face her trauma and grief regarding her mother and spends the night thinking that she will have to open the lid soon. But because she isn't ready to do so, she only assures herself that she's okay and that she and Kyoko will always be together. She tries masking her pain behind a smile and becomes more cautious to talk about her mother, but Kyo sees right through her facade and encourages her to speak up and tells her it's fine for her to talk about her mother even if most of the Zodiacs don't have good parents. Toru listens to Kyo talk about his parents and Kyo listens to Toru talk about her mother. Yuki also tells Toru that he has opened the lid and in the process thanks Toru for always accepting, supporting, and helping him ever since they first met as children, kisses her forehead, and admits to himself, but not to her, that she is so dear to him. This surprises Toru greatly and is confused as to why he looks so sad and what he wanted to convey, but Yuki says that he'll tell her eventually. The next day, Toru finds a horse in the yard whom Yuki introduces as Isuzu Soma, though she quickly runs away from them. Now that Toru has met 11 of the 12 zodiac animals, she wonders whether Akito is the remaining rooster. 
Akito also attends the beach trip. In order to isolate Toru from everyone else, Akito forces all of the Zodiacs, minus Kyo, to spend time with her. Although Toru worries about them, she also develops a deeper bond with Kyo, and he even confides to her about the truth behind his rosary. However, seeing Toru and Kyo having fun together struck a chord within Akito, and she thus orders to have Kyo visit her. This makes Toru happy since Kyo would finally be included. However, unbeknownst to Toru, Kyo and Akito's meeting leads to Kyo realizing his love towards Toru, and Akito convinces him that he doesn't deserve to fall in love, and that he's the reason for her misery and involvement with the Soma family. When his guilt regarding Kyoko's death resurfaces, and after giving up on fighting against his predestined fate, as in his eventual confinement, Kyo vows to spend as much of his time outside as he can with Toru. Before leaving the beach, Akito goes to see Toru. When Momiji tries to stop Akito from entering the beach house, Akito beats him until Toru steps in to protect him. Akito tells her to stop interfering, warns her of Kyo's coming confinement, and explains that Kure no Soma, not herself, is the rooster, for she is the god of the zodiac and the ruler of their souls. Toru is horrified, but her desire to protect her friends, especially in regards to all her previous experiences with the members of the zodiac, emboldens her to break the curse. After Summer Vacation after returning from the beach trip, Toru visits Kazuma and asks if he knows how to break the curse. Kazuma doesn't have an answer, but he does reveal his own theories about the curse and what it entails. This makes Toru even more determined to break the curse. Before her parent-teacher conference, Toru gets a call from her aunt who tells her that her grandfather has strained his back and that he's currently bedridden. Shigure offers to go in her grandfather's place. Later, Toru visits her grandfather. She's scared when he tells her that he would like to see the deceased Kyoko and Katsuya since it reminds her of the time Kyoko said the same thing about Katsuya in the past. Toru almost breaks down in the middle of the street, but Kyo suddenly appears and comforts her. During the parent-teacher conference, Toru tells her teacher, Mayuko Shiraki, that she's planning to graduate and find a job to honor her mother's wishes, and that she'll leave the Soma house when the time comes. But thinking of the future makes Toru anxious, as it makes her trauma regarding her mother resurface, as well as her fear of Kyo's eventual confinement. After Toru hears that Kure no Soma is the man that Arisa is in love with, she secretly goes to search for him. She's found by Momiji's younger sister, Momosoma, who shows her the way inside. She also asks Toru to tell Momiji that she wants to be her big brother. When Toru later meets Momiji, she tells him everything Momo told her, and both of them begin to cry. Afterwards, Momiji gives her the instructions to find Kureno. She's almost found by Rensoma, but Kureno covers for her. Toru then asks him about Arisa, but he tells her that he has no intentions to see her again. Nonetheless, Toru gives him Arisa's contact information. During nighttime, Toru confines in Kyo that people want to be with the people they love. Kyo misinterprets this as Toru having found herself a boyfriend and tells her that he will support her. This prompts Toru to cry, causing a much confused Kyo to comfort her. During the second year school trip, Toru spends a fun time with Kyo, Yuki, Saki, and Arisa. On the trip, Toru is confused as to why she feels uneasy around Kyo, just like she felt during their previous interactions. When Toru is afraid that she'll be pushed away by him someday, she reaches out to him, to which he grabs her hand. This makes Toru blush, and she comments to herself that Kyo can make her happy or sad within just a few words. A while after returning from the trip, Toru finds Rin in Shigure's house. She's horrified by Rin's presumed PTSD attack and instantly comforts her. Rin then comes to, and she later yells at Toru to stop meddling in the Soma family's business, but Toru yells that she won't stop since she also wants to break the curse and has things she doesn't want to give up on. Rin eventually breaks down and cries herself out in Toru's arms out of hopelessness, and Toru comforts her by speaking from her own painful experiences rather than her mother's wisdom. After this, Toru and Rin begin to meet up and confide everything they know about the curse to each other. At one point, Rin questions why she wants to break the curse and who her most precious person is. Toru thinks back to the time when she was told about Kyo's confinement and is unable to answer. Rin changes the subject, and they then tell each other to not do anything dangerous on their own again. Later at Shigure's house, Toru thinks about why she couldn't answer who her most precious person was, since she would have said it was her mother without any hesitation before. She then has a nightmare about the day of Kyoko's accident, and horrified, reassures herself that they will always be together.
Sometime later, Yuki comes to terms with the fact that he had actually been looking for a mother in Toru and loves her platonically and wishes for her to be happier than anyone else. During the cultural festival, Toru's class play is rewritten as Cinderella-ish and the performance is successful. Though Toru, in an out-of-character outburst, exclaims that she would be unhappy if Kyo, who is playing the prince, would be locked up in a castle until he dies, speaking about how she didn't want Kyo to be locked up in the cat's room. Afterwards, Toru and Kyo begin to wonder if the other party is beginning to like them, but both of them think it's unforgivable to think that way. During New Year's Eve, Toru and Kyo decide to spend it at Kazuma's house. Toru is very happy to see Rin there, though the latter rejects her. While learning more about Kyo, Toru thinks to herself that although her wish the previous year was for Kyo and Yuki to get along, her current wish was to break the curse. The next day, Toru accidentally reveals to Rin that she knows that she is somehow involved with Haru, praises Yuki for standing up against Akito, and is grateful towards Momiji for delivering the Cinderella-ish DVD to Kureno as she had wished. Sometime later, Toru runs into Kureno, who had watched the Cinderella-ish DVD she had gifted him via Momiji. Kureno then hugs Toru and confesses that his curse is already broken. He also gives back Toru's DVD of the play and tells her that he will not see Arisa again since he promised to stay by Akito's side forever, seeing her as that sad little girl. He also tells her a little about Akito's past and about her mother, Ren. After Kureno apologizes to Toru for everything and departs, Toru cries from the revelation of Kureno's curse being broken and Akito being female. Saki senses Toru's distress and takes her home overnight, where Toru tells Arisa only that Kureno is promised to another woman. She apologizes to Arisa for everything, but Arisa just reiterates her love for Toru and reassures that it's all okay. Toru recovers but remains confused, not knowing whom she can talk to about what she knows. Then she asks Hyo about hypothetically breaking the curse. He derides it as a vain hope. Third Year Arc When Kyo later tells Toru that it's good that it's lively at Kazuma's place so Kazuma wouldn't get lonely down the line, Toru is greatly saddened, realizing that Kyo has already mentally checked out. When Toru visits Rin at Kazuma's again, she oversees Shigure telling Rin that the curse will be broken eventually, naturally through time. Toru demands to know how soon, because it has to be before next spring since Kyo would be confined otherwise. Toru runs away and Shigure catches up to her and tells her the cat exists to give the rest of the Zodiac a scapegoat they can feel is worse than they are, which distresses her. Toru is also horrified when Shigure asks Toru if she loves Kyo, since she had begun to feel guilty for letting Kyo replace her mother as the most important person in her heart. Kyo suddenly appears and comforts her, which causes Toru to break down in tears, thinking that she doesn't want her time with Kyo to end. Toru visits her mother's grave on the second anniversary of her death. Kyo tells her that he can't accompany her this year, which Toru accepts. But Kyo does visit Kyoko's grave alone later on and meets Toru's grandfather, who reveals that Toru speaks formally and politely as an imitation of her father. When Kyo returns home, he asks Toru about her father and if she resembles him, and she eventually admits she's pretending to be like her father because she viewed her father as the bad guy and didn't want him to take her mother away from her. Toru breaks down in tears, deeming herself to be an awful person, but Kyo hugs her and reassures her that her mother knew and what made her think less of herself wouldn't disillusion him. For the following days, Toru and Kyo are awkward around each other due to their previous personal interaction together. Toru eventually works up the courage to talk to Kyo, but she's interrupted by Kyo who tells her it's stupid if she's in love with him. He also questions if her love towards her mother was gone now. Kyo then ends up admitting that he could have saved Kyoko since he was there on the day of the car accident, but grabbing Kyoko would have caused him to transform and reveal his curse. He also says that Kyoko's last words were, I won't forgive you, and tells Toru that he doesn't want her to forgive him because he can't forgive himself. Toru rejects either of those choices, confessing she loves him in spite of her mother's supposed judgment. However, Kyo still rejects her by saying that it makes him feel disillusioned, a remark which contradicts what he said when she opened up about her father, leaving Toru heartbroken. Kyo runs away, Yuki chases after him, and while Toru is still processing, she meets Akito. Akito tells Toru that she must feel triumphant now that she has won by gaining the affection of all the members of the Zodiacs and destroyed the only life she had known. Akito then threatens Toru with a knife, but Toru, realizing how both she and Akito had been afraid of being left behind and tried to hold on to an unchanging reality, Akito clinging to the eternal bonds of the Zodiac and Toru wanting her mother to always be first in her heart, tells Akito that she understands how scary it is to be alone. 
She acknowledges Akito as a person instead of the god she has believed her father wished her to be, and the woman she was born as instead of the man she was raised to be. Even though Akito rejects Toru by screaming, cutting her arm, and slapping her, Toru doesn't give in and offers her a fresh start, introducing herself and asking if they can be friends. Before Akito can take her hand, however, the cliff Toru stands on crumbles and she falls. The fall renders her unconscious, and in her daze, she admits to herself that it must have been painful for Kyo to spend time with her. But for her, it's filled her with immeasurable happiness, and ever since she met him, she has gradually fallen in love with him. In fact, she ran so desperately after him the day his true form was revealed because she was already in love with him. And even if she's not by his side, she wants him to live on and find his own happiness. Toru tries to comfort Kyo who, along with Yuki, found her and Kyo responds by regretfully apologizing and kissing her. Toru survives the fall and is hospitalized. As she recovers, all of her family members and her friends visit her. Kyo is the one person who refuses to visit Toru though, since he doesn't want to hurt her any further and is convinced that he won't be able to protect her. When he suggests that Yuki might be able to protect Toru instead, Yuki gives Kyo a beating and convinces him to reconcile with Toru. Toru is eventually discharged. When she sees Kyo, she takes off in a dash because she feels as if she's burdening him. But Kyo eventually catches up to her. He apologizes for trampling all over Toru's feelings and asks for one last chance to make things right. Confessing that he loves her and wants to be with her forever, Toru asks if it's really okay for them to stay together. And Kyo proceeds to kiss Toru for the second time. Kyo then asks if he can hug Toru, but warns her that his transformation may be the cause of hardship together. However, Toru doesn't mind and just reiterates the strength of her love for him. They hug, but Kyo doesn't transform. The Soma curse is broken. Kyo immediately rips off his Juzu bead bracelet and facing no consequences for it, Toru and Kyo hug and cry like the day they were first born in the world. Afterwards, Toru starts picking up Kyo's scattered beads because she wanted to protect the feelings of every precious cat who had to wear a string of beads just so they could live. Toru and Kyo then visit the Soma compound to break the news to Kazuma. Toru also visits Akito, who pulls her into her room. It turns out that Akito is just as emotional about the curse breaking, so Toru comforts her by hugging her close. After the whole ordeal, Toru and Kyo start dating. Toru and Kyo soon go on their first date, accompanied by Saki and Arisa. After the date, Kyo asks Toru to accompany him to Kyoko's grave, where he proposes the idea of moving away. He says that he wants to learn all kinds of things and be a part of the world now that he's free from the curse, and admits that he wants to take Toru along with him on his journey. Toru emotionally declares that she's fully ready to go wherever Kyo goes, even if it means that she'll have to leave everyone she loves behind, since not being with Kyo would make her even lonelier. Toru then tells Kyo that she's steadfast in her belief that Kyoko didn't hold a grudge against Kyo, which is later confirmed to be true. Kyoko's last words to Kyo were cut off before she could say, if you don't protect Toru. Upon hearing this, Kyo tells Kyoko's grave that he will keep his promise to her to protect Toru for the rest of his life. Epilogue After graduation, Toru and Kyo are shown packing to move to another city to continue his martial arts training so that he can inherit Kazuma's dojo in the future. While emptying and cleaning their rooms, Toru is excited to begin her new life with Kyo, but she also reminisces about the memories she had created with everyone over the past three years. Toru is overwhelmed by emotions and begins crying, and Kyo comforts her and tells her with endings come beginnings too. At the end of the same day, Yuki confesses to Toru that she had been like a mother figure to him. He expresses immense gratitude towards her for coming into his life and helping him grow into the person he is today. He adds that everyone in the Soma family, not only himself, loves her and that she will always be a warm and kind presence to all of them. Lastly, he finally calls her Toru as opposed to the usual Honda-san, moving Toru to a bright smile filled with tears. The story ends with Toru and Yuki exchanging a handshake. The years pass and Toru is last seen walking hand in hand with Kyo in their old age as their son, daughter-in-law, and one of their grandchildren talk about their love fondly. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi and make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. Just out of curiosity, uh, can y'all comment down below if you cried while watching Fruits Basket? Thank you. Adrian out.